this last part of the lecture. So what I want to tell or what I want to reprise first is the gives to him relation. This is basically as you can see here, it is n1 d mu1, this gives to him relation. So mu1 is the partial molar gris free energy or chemical potential of species 1 and then n2 d mu2, this is for species 2. Similarly, this is for d mu i, n i d mu i which is equal to 0. So basically in more compact form, if you want to write the gives to an equation, it basically tells you sigma i equal to 1 to all the components n i d mu i equal to 0. Note that the same gives to relation basically where mu i is del g del n i where T p temperature pressure and n j not equal to i are kept constant. Now let us have a uh, so basically this extends to any partial molar property. So let us have a partial molar property z then basically uh, say z is the total property like like g right gives free energy. So z is some, some sort of a total property of the mixture of the solution then z equals to what we know n i z i bar right that is first thing that we know. Second thing that we know from gives to relation that summation i equal to 1 to c n i d z i bar equal to 0 right. So these are the relations that we basically know. Right, so these are the relations that we know for any any uh, property, any any thermodynamic property Z. So if you have any thermodynamic property Z, then you basically can write it as n i z i z i bar, and if it is n i z i bar, then basically this is the gives to him relation, right? This is the gives to him condition or gives to him equation, right? The gives to him equation, and then there is also another uh, equation that d z equals to n i d z i bar again as you can see i is are repeating so there is a summation here right there is a summation over i equal to 1 to c right so this is all we know right but uh, one thing i missed uh, in the previous uh, lecture was the uh, how do you basically define the concentration of solutes in a solution because when you prepare a solution, whether it is liquid in liquid or solid in liquid or solid in um, solid, uh, there is something called a, in a, a solution. You have a solution is basically, as you know, is solid and you have multi components. So you can have different solutes, right? Different types of solute, different types of solutes like solute 1, uh, solute 2, solute 3. So it's a multi component solution. So and you have a solvent right the solvent and solute right now when you have solute and solvent then there are there are these varieties of solution that solution there is a classification that we know that a solution can be concentrated another is basically dilute dilute means the mole fraction of solute is very very small compared to that the solvent right now when it is concentrated or normal solution then basically you basically use mole fraction of solute. So xi, so if i is the solute, if I consider i to be a solute, solute component. So this is solute component i. Then if you have ni, ni is the mole number of i and you have total uh, the total concentration, the total number of including solvent, the total mole number is basically summation i equal to 1 to c because see the components will include the solutes as well as the solvent, right? It will include the solutes as well as the solvent. So basically, so summation i equal to 1 to c and i basically includes all the solute components plus the solvent component. And you can call it like something like n and ni by n is nothing but mole fraction xi of the solute 
right so mole fraction x of the solute is one way of looking at or quantifying solute another way of quantifying solute is using weight fraction right dot wy right the small wy as you can see here this is lower case wy and lower case wy is the weight fraction of solute when capital wy is the weight of solute is the weight of solute i or mass of solute i and summation wy the, this is upper cap wy that is remember this is also so summation upper cap wy from i equal to 1 to c basically is nothing but the sum of all the sum of weights or sum of, uh, sum of weights of all the components including the solvent and the solute components and basically you can call it something like w okay so if you have w and if you have wy then what you get is a lower case wy which is basically weight fraction now weight fraction many a times weight fraction is given as weight percent even mole fraction is given as mole percent so if you have mole fraction xi then mole percent is nothing but 100 xi right similarly 100 wi will give you the weight percent right so you can have mole percent way so we can tell that mole percent or atomic percent way we, we often uh, tell that these are the, the, the this this is this this mole percent of solute in uh, mole this mole percent of solute say some solute a and mole percent some mole percent of uh, solute b something like that then mole percent is nothing but 100 times mole fraction similarly weight percent is nothing nothing but 100 times weight fraction now these are basically used for looking at, for for defining concentrations of solutes in a normal or a concentrated solution right in a normal solution so if where it is not dilute dilute when i talk talk about dilute dilute means the amount of solvent is so high that the amount of so the the amount of solvent is so high that in the denominator you are only considering the solvent in the denominator because the amount of so so, so basically you have say for example x1 is your solute mole fraction and x2 is your solvent mole fraction now x2 is something like say for example 0.999 and then x1 is nothing but 0 0.001 so in that case x2 is much much greater than x1 now in such a case we can call it so x1 is your solvent let us assume that x1 is your solvent so let us assume that We have a solvent X1, sol solvent is component 1 and that has a mole fraction of X1 which is greater greater than X2 then in that case and so solute is 2 so this is a, say a binary solution solute is 2 then X2 is so small that we do not so basically x2 is so small that we do not consider x2 when i count so basically if i have for example this corresponds to say say i have say n moles or n n n moles are total and it which contains n1 moles of one right one is your sol solvent one and n2 moles of 2 component 2 so component 1 is the solvent right component 1 is the solvent right in that case x1 is n1 by n which is roughly equal to 1 and x2 is n2 by n which can which basically approaches zero right so in such a case we use a different measure for concentration such as molarity molarity basically tells you uh, so molarity of solute i basically tells you the amount of the mole numbers of the, the, the total number of moles of solute i in the total volume of the 
solution, right? In the total in total volume of solution or volume of solvent, you can also call it the volume of solvent because solvent is the solvent volume is solvent is very large. So you are basically telling that over the total volume, which includes the volume of the solvent, which is quite significantly large, you are basically trying to find out the molarity, that is the concentration or moles of solute per unit volume, moles of solute per unit volume, right? For dilute solutions, you use such a uh, so per unit volume of the solvent, for example, right? Per unit volume of the solvent, but um, uh, so or per unit volume of the solution, but the, in the solution, as you can see, the contribution of solvent to V is enormous compared to that of solute, right? That's the dilute solution. For dilute solution, we also use something called molality, which is basically defined as Mi, small Mi, lowercase Mi, which is Ni by weight of solvent. We basically look at the weight of solvent, and the weight of solvent is expressed in general. When I talk about molality, it is in kg, right? It is in kilo, right? So now there is one point that we were looking at the partial. So we were looking at partial molar gas free energy, right? Partial. So we called it partial molar gas free energy. Right, and we defined it as mu, so of component i equals to del G del N i, that is change in the, so change in free energy, change in the total gas free energy, again change in total gas free energy, remember, with the change in the mole number of component i keeping all other mole numbers of all other mole numbers of all other components constant. So, n j which is not equal to i is constant, temperature is constant, fixed, pressure is fixed. So, this is this. Now, as you know, the g, so you had this terms like u, s, v, n, right? We had this energy as a function of s, v, n. So, that time, and you then had, so and as you know, S and T are conjugate, V and P are conjugate, N and mu are conjugate. So basically, S, think of these conjugates, S, T and V, P. So what we talked about is like H. H is basically, we told, this is for a pressure reservoir. When, when we use enthalpy, then we write S, H is a function of S. But V is replaced by its conjugate, which is P. Yeah. Similarly, for because in this case we are telling that the system is in contact with a pressure reservoir or mechanical reservoir. So right, and there is volume exchange. But even if though if there is volume exchange, the amount of volume change in the reservoir because the reservoir is so large is negligible. So basically, the system acquires the pressure that is uh, pressure of the reservoir, right? So that is. When you use H, so from U you get H, and again that's a Legendre transform, right? And we have uh, seen that, and U H, and then you have G, which is where S is replaced by T, and V is replaced by P, conjugate variable, and M, right? This is what we have defined here, and then th there is also Helmholtz free energy, where basically you have V, but S is replaced by T. So T comma V comma M, right? So, so all these thermodynamic potentials we have explained, right? One is the energy, right? Another is enthalpy, right? Enthalpy is when we have a pressure reservoir, pressure reservoir, or mechanical reservoir, and here it is like thermal plus mechanical reservoir. reservoir. Let's call this also mechanical reservoir. Mechanical means pressure, right? So, it is acquiring the pressure of the reservoir. Reservoir is the surrounding, right? And here it is basically, if we talk about this, so this is only thermal reservoir. See, here volume is basically so pressure can change but volume does not 
So, so, so basically f t v n when we tell, so if it's a function of t, that means the system is in contact with the thermal reservoir, right? So, it acquires the temperature of the reservoir. So, but in g, it is a function of, so it is a thermal and mechanical reservoir, system is in contact with the thermal mechanical reservoir and thermal mechanical reservoir means it is basically, we have, what we are specifying is temperature and pressure, right? So, uh, temperature and pressure which are basically conjugates of entropy and volume. Now, in all these cases, you can express mu, right? So, for example, mu i equals del G del n i t p n j, you can also write mu i equals to del u del l n i, but in this case, this will be t will be replaced by s, p will be replaced by v, right? So, as you can see, it is s v n j not equal to i. Similarly, del h del n i s p, you have s fixed, p fixed, right? Instead of v, this p fixed and n also fixed. Similarly, you can for Helmholtz energy, it will be del f del n i, and in this case, it is v is fixed, temperature is fixed, and n j not equal to i, right? So, there are various ways to define the same partial molar uh, quantity, and this partial molar quantity here that we are considering, we have been discussing so far, is the chemical potential. Now, as you know, that from gives given relation that I have already discussed, at constant temperature and pressure, dg is nothing but mu1 dn1 plus mu2 dn2 plus mu j dn j and ni d mu i equal to 0, that is your gives to him equation. And this is coming, this is called Euler equation at a given temperature and pressure. Right, so it is mu one n one plus mu two n two plus mu j n j. Okay, or otherwise we can also write in in a generally as the Euler equation is g equals to h minus t s plus mu i. Right, h minus t s plus mu i. So if i repeats, I don't. I sometimes ignore the summation sign because the summation is already implied that. I am summing over i equal to 1 to c, okay, where c is the number of components, okay. Okay, now think of mixing. What is the mixing process? What is the mixing process? When you have solute and solvent or you have like components A and B and you are mixing it and you are forming a solution, how do you do that? Because that is what creates this partial molar quantity like partial molar volume and so on. So basically, if you think of mixing, what you do, you basically fix a pressure, you fix a temperature, then you mix solvent A with a variable amount of solute B, okay? Because this variable amount is because, see so if you think of this, what I am telling is, how do you, if you do not have a variable amount, you don't know how to calculate the partial molar volume, right? So basically, think of an experiment where you fix pressure and temperature, then solvent A, the amount of solvent is fixed, but you are varying the amount of solute B, and in each case, you are measuring the change in volume, okay? So Na is fixed and Nb is varied, and then you come out, so if you have that, so basically you have now data points, right? You have data points. So if I if I change my amount of sol solute amount, solute amount at a given temperature and pressure, and you have a fixed mole number of solvent, then what you will see is that the volume changes as a function of Nb. Nb is the mole number of solute B, right? Now, if this volume changes. V N B you can write it as A0 plus A1 N B plus A2 N B square plus A3 N B cubed. Right? So V0 you can write as V N B you can write as A0 plus A1 N B plus A2 N B square plus A3 N B cubed. So total volume V basically what I am talking about is what are these A0, A1, A2, A3? We are assuming that it is fitted to a polynomial of some order. Okay, here the polynomial, if here the polynomial that I am using is of order 3, right? Polynomial function of some order, right? So we are using that. So, 
so you have v in b equals to a0 plus a1 in b plus a2 in b square plus a3 in b cube. Okay, so total value v is fitted to a polynomial function. Now, you have the step 2 that is the partial molar volume vb bar, right, which is basically del v del n b keeping n a t and t constant, right. Now, vb bar, how do you get? You already have fitted it to a polynomial a0 plus a1 in b plus a2 in b square plus a3 in b cubed. And you are basically calculating the partial volume volume, which is basically del v del n b keeping n a p and t fixed. Okay, so it becomes a1 plus 2 a2 n b plus 3 a3 n b square. Okay, so you get the partial molar volume v b bar. And in state 3, you have v, which is n a v a bar plus n b v b bar. Already you know the v n b, you know also v b bar as a function of n b, right? Then basically you can get v a bar as a function from v, right? v that you have observed minus n b v b bar by n a. Right, so from this equation you get VA bar, which is unknown from VB bar, and then there is this NB, that is the amount of solute, and basically you are dividing by the amount of solvent, right, the mole number of solvent, which is fixed, which is NA. So, if you have C components in a mixture, if you have C components in a mixture, then the property Z, the property Z, how do you find out, so how do you define the property Z? You have, say for example, you have C components in a mixture and you have ZK0, which is the partial molar or molar value of property Z in a, so this is partial value of property Z due to, so this is the partial molar quantity, right, the partial molar quantity is always associated one of, with one of the components, so let us consider the component K, okay, so ZK0 is the partial molar quantity or much partial molar val value of property Z in a reference uh, or standard state of due to component Right, so you have component K, and think of that this partial molar value of property Z in a reference or standard state is given as ZK zero or ZK zero. So if you have that, the reference state value Z zero, right? Z zero is basically nothing but ZK zero in K sum K equal to one to C. Right, so this is your so, k equal to 1 to c is a sum. So, zk0 is basically the partial molar value of property z due to component k in the reference or standard state. Now, think of this delta z mix. What is the change? Because you have these different components, you are putting them together. So, you have one component here, you have one another here, another here. So, you have like one in a box. So, think of this. You have like a which contains only a component and you have another box which is b then you are adding them and mixing now before adding them you had for example these properties like uh, a had a property like z a zero and this had z zero now think of this z zero is nothing but z a zero n a plus z b zero n b now when you make the solution, when you mix them, when you mix them, then you are basically having a solution of A and B, A plus B. Now, solution is such that you may not be able to identify A and B separately, right? A and B are completely mixed together. Means you should be able to identify means this, the, at the, at a, at a, at a, with a very high resolution, a very high resolution microscope. So, in such a case, you will basically see the components A and B, right? You will see the atoms of A, atoms of B, but atoms of A and atoms of B are uh, mixed in such a way. Say, think of salt solution. You add salt to the, you add salt to water and you mix it. 
and ultimately you cannot distinguish the salt and water right you cannot you will think that it's a clear solution of salt and water right so, so the only the physical properties have changed but you do not basically visually see like unless the salt salt precipitates out right at some certain condition you cannot see whether you do not see whether uh, uh, or you, you cannot visually identify whether you have salt particles inside water, right? Salt particles have been thoroughly mixed in water and it has gone inside the space of the water molecules, right? Space between water molecules. So, in that intermolecular space, the salt particles have already lost and they have dissociated and they have dissociated into ions. You have Na plus ions, you have Cl minus ions, you have H plus ions, you have H minus ions, right? So, so you cannot distinguish. So this is the A plus B solution state, right? There's a solution state. Now in the solution state, in the A B solution, right? This is called A B solution. In that you may have a property which is same set, okay? Or Z solution. Let's call it Z solution. Now Z solution minus Z naught is the delta Z mix. That is the change in the change in uh, the value of property Z due to mixing. Okay? So basically. What I want to tell, if you think this way, that you have say components 1, 2 and 3 and initially you had say G1, 0 was the energy of component 1 in the standard state before mixing and then you had G2, 0 and G3, 0. These were the free energies of components 1, 2 and 3 before mixing. Now right components 1, 2 and 3 before mixing. So, these are the standard states like 0, 0 and 0. That is why I have put the superscript of 0. Now, I have mixed them. I have mixed them and I am looking at G solution. Now, if I know this, then basically if I know G, Z solution, I can measure the Gibbs free energy of the solution. Then delta G mix equal to G solution minus N1. See, you have N1 components of G10, N1 moles of G1, of N1 moles of component 1, N2 moles of component 2. So, N, N2 G20 and N3 G30, right? So, basically G10, basically if I think of that, you have per mole, you have uh, this G10 and delta G mix is G solution. So, basically if you think of this, this is basically molar the change in molar free energy to mixing and G solution again you can think of like G solution is nothing but the total free energy by the total uh, mole number. So, that is the G solution. Okay, that is the molar free energy of the solution and this is the N1 G10. G10 is the partial molar quantity of partial molar uh, free energy of component 1 in the standard unmixed state okay so that's the idea right so remember again that g solution can also be written as as you can see here it is basically g bar k n k or g bar i n i and then this is repeat sum over k right so this is this g bar k is the or you can call it mu k n k and that is of the solution right after mixing this is after mixing so you have a state before mixing okay which is the pure state g10 g20 g30 and so on and you had a state after mixing which is like you had g1 bar g2 bar g3 bar and so on and then or basically mu1 mu2 mu3 and so on and if you have that that the difference between them will basically give me the, 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 the change, the change in the free energy uh, due to mixing or delta G mix or delta in this case uh, more generally it is like delta Z mix. So, delta Z mix is basically see again ZK bar is the partial mobile property of K. of component K in solution, right? So, ZK bar, so if I write this way again, just to explain to you, 
is partial molar property partial molar value of property z associated or contribute when associated with component k in solution in solution on the other hand zk0 zk0 is basically the partial molar property of a uh, partial molar value of comp of uh, the property z associated with component k in the standard state and the standard state is often the unmixed state in the unmixed state so zk0 so this is zk bar minus zk0 and if you think of that it doesn't make so that k bar times n k which is basically the solution minus that k 0 n k which is basically z 0 right summation so basically what you can tell is that this difference is written as delta z k bar that is a change in partial molar uh, partial molar property okay of component k change in partial molar property of component k and this property z this z can be anything it can be uh, entropy it can be use free energy times nk right and that basically gives me the delta z mix so delta z mix is delta z k bar delta z k bar is nothing but this right delta z k bar is nothing but this z k bar minus z k zero which is delta z k bar and delta z k bar nk the summation basically gives me delta z Okay, so here again I have formally defined it. So now if you do that, then you have delta d delta z mix. So d delta z mix is z k bar d n k plus n k d z k bar again z k 0 d n k minus n k d z k 0. Now as you know that n k d delta z k again that comes from uh, gives you an equation. So n k d delta z k will be equal to z right d delta z k bar. So, d delta z k bar is basically, so basically delta z k bar is z k bar minus z k 0 and d delta z k bar n k into d delta z k bar equal to 0 comes from these given relation, right. So, this is coming from here. So, then we can write d delta z mix is nothing but delta z k bar d n k, right. And what we also now understood is 0 equals to n k d delta z k bar right this is over k and this is called q's to for any property for any molar property right so basically again remember when i am talk writing this way g equal to g a bar n a plus g b bar n b or here we are writing in terms of n remember this this will not be this is this is basically the total gives energy right this is total gives energy okay so from now on when i'm looking at solution i will generally use this type of a notation g if i write total g then total g is basically this is total so this is just in joule and then gm i write is gm solution will be per mole right this is this is this is energy per mole gives free energy per mole okay or molar molar quantity so let's call it molar and when i write g bar i or mu i then that is basically partial molar quantity okay so gm so basically if g is mu a n a plus mu b n b then g by n where n is n a plus n b is nothing but gm which is the molar free energy which is basically mu a x a plus mu b x b where x a and x b are mole fractions now as you know dg is mu a d n a plus mu b d n b where mu b and mu a are del g that g is again total free energy and n a plus n b equal to n but dgm x dg by n which is mu a d x a plus mu b dx b right it is basically dgm is nothing but mu a 
dx a plus mu b dx b right and then delta gm mix that is the change in molar free energy of mixing is nothing but delta mu k which is mu k minus mu k 0 times x k right so delta gm mix is delta mu k x k where x k is n k by n right and also you know x k d mu k equal to c right summation x k d mu k equal to c so d g m equal to mu a d x a plus mu b d x b and g m as you can see now see we have changed so basically remember when we did n a plus n b that was equal to n right but here x a plus x b equal to 1 and d x a equal to minus d x b that means d x a plus d x b since d x a plus d x b equal to c right d x a equal to minus d x b so d g m goes to mu a minus d x b right mu a minus d x b plus mu b d x b so what i have done mu a d mu, mu a so basically d g m is mu a d x a plus mu b d x b and we know d x a equals minus d x b so i am putting here minus d x b so this becomes mu b minus mu a into d x b so d g m by d x b is nothing but mu b minus d x b so and so mu a is mu b minus d g m by d x b and g m is mu a x a plus mu b x b so if you can if you can replace mu a by mu b minus d g m by d x b into x a plus mu b x b then what you get basically is so d g m by d x b as you know d g m by d x b is mu b minus mu a right d g m by d x b is mu nothing but mu b minus mu a so you can take out x a d g m by d x b but you have some see mu b x b and you have also mu b x a which is x a plus x b into mu b with minus x a d g m by d x b so basically this comes out to be g m comes out to be mu b minus 1 minus x b d g m d x b you can also do the same thing so basically you can get mu b that is the partial molar gives energy of b or chemical potential of b in the solution in the a b solution which is nothing but equal to the which is related to the molar free energy of the solution and then it is also related to 1 minus x b d g m d x b see there is a very nice geometrical interpretation and also remember you can do the same by starting with the definition like you can start with mu b which is del g del n b for a fixed n a t n p and then this you can write as del n g m where n is basically n equals to n a plus n p right del n g m del n b okay and keep t p n a t p and then you can do a chain rule so basically you have del n del n b uh, uh, g m times del n del n b plus um, uh, n times del g m del n b and then you can express that as in terms of x b and you will get the same relation you will get the same relation for mu b mu b is g m plus 1 minus x b d g m d x b and remember this relation that you have gotten this relation that you have obtained this particular relation that you have obtained basically you can show this geometrically by a tangent construction so i will show you that so you have so from so as you can see here a, a little bit of rearrangement starting with this equation a little bit of rearrangement okay give me the slope dgm dxb which is mu b minus mu a now what do i mean by slope so i'll just come to that so mu b is gm plus 1 minus xb dgm dxb now you have some say molar free energy so gm is plotted so as you can see here the gm is plotted here and you have drawn a tangent to some composition x naught now if you see that from this relation mu b is g m plus 1 minus x b d g m d x b or mu a is g m minus x b d g m d x b right or you can write g m equals to so from 2 you can write g m equals to 
dgm dx b into x b plus mu a. Now think of this. This is basically y. This is nothing but y, right? Gm is in the y-axis. Y equal to m x plus c, right? So y equal to m x plus c. So basically, you have Gm as the y-axis, and you have the slope which is dgm by dx b. You have the slope which is basically dgm by dx b at the point x zero, right? You can take any point, but right? you can take this point and draw a tangent like this. And you can see that this is intercept C, right? This is intercept C, as you can see here. This is intercept C. So you can also write the other way, okay, in terms of XA, okay, and basically you can, or in terms of XA, and basically you will get mu B as the intercept, right? So basically dgm by dx B, as you can see, is nothing but mu B minus mu A. So if you think of this as a slope, so mu B minus mu A by so mu b minus mu a by so if you think of this okay what is the slope of this point then if you see dgm by dx b equal to mu b minus right okay and as you can see that if you if you if you want to look at this if you want to derive the same relation you can also think of like the points so these are like coordinates right so you have this point so if you look at this point what is this point this is mu a so y is mu a and x is zero right x b equal to zero that means this is pure a right this point is pure a and this point is pure b pure b means x b equal to one right pure a is means x equal to zero so x b is increasing from 0 to 1 this way, right? x b is increasing from 0 to 1 this way. Now if you see that, you have 0 mu a, right? This is your, so basically this is like your x, y coordinates. So x is x0, then the energy is gm0. If it is 0, then it's mu a, 1 mu b, x b gm. So if you look at that, x b gm. So it is y minus y1 by y2 minus y1 equals to x minus x1 by x2 minus x1. Right? When it is gm, then it is x b and when it is mu a, then the value of x is 0. Right? So, so if you see, and again, when it is mu b, when it is mu b um, as y2, so mu b and then you have y1, which is mu a, then it is 1 minus 0. So as you can see, gm equals to mu b minus mu a into xb plus mu a. And mu b minus mu a is nothing but, so that means mu b minus mu a is nothing but the dgm dxb that we have already shown, which is basically mu b minus mu a by 1 minus 0, which is basically, so basically if you think of this, if you look at the slope, so if you think of the tan theta here, that is basically this. What is this? This is this is the intercept here. So this is the intercept here. So this part. So if you look at, if I do this way, this part. So if I draw a line like this, okay. If I draw a line like this, and I tell, what is this part? This. This part is nothing but this part is nothing but mu b minus mu a. And what is this line? This line the length is 1 minus 0. 1 minus 0. So 1. So mu b minus mu a by 1 is the tan theta. Tan theta is nothing but the slope of this line. Right? Slope of this line. So you can see that there is a very nice geometrical interpretation of this the intercepts of this the the the, the molar free energy curve or molar property curve of any type of molar property this molar property here looks like a para it looks like a parabola you can see you can make it the opposite of a parabola so whatever be the molar property whatever way it is it can be any way it can be any any type of a shape for example it can be something like this okay uh, Say for example this and if I have to draw this, I have to use my hand. So it can be any way like something like this. So whatever be the molar property, you can always take any point here, 
and then you can draw the uh, you can draw the uh, tangent to any point and then the intercepts will basically give you the 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 potentials the pot the the the, the uh, intercepts will give you the partial molar properties the intercepts will give you the partial molar properties or in this case the chemical potentials right partial molar properties are nothing but the chemical potentials of the different of different components in a binary uh, system you have two components so the left hand side gives you uh, the the left hand side intercept gives you the uh, the the, the left hand side intercept gives you the the the, the the potential or the or the partial molar quantity of component a and the right hand side here gives you that of the component b right that right hand side intercept gave you component b and the left hand side gave you mu a and the slope basically is mu b minus mu a right by 1 minus c in this case right so basically you can see that this is nothing but this y equals to m m is the slope and this is x plus c and c is mu a right again you can think of this the other way if you write in terms of xa xa varies from right to left right xa is xa goes from 0 to 1 from right to left and in that way also if you write you basically get mu b as the intercept right mu b can be taken as an intercept or mu a can be taken as an intercept right so basically if i take mu b as the intercept for example so gm equal to mu b and 1 minus x b is nothing but x a and dgm dx b right so basically you can write this way also so <clears throat> i'll come to this type of a curve in a later in the later stage when i discuss the model but what i want to tell now is the partial molar properties are basically if i look at the the the, the mixing curve if i look at the mixing curve or if i look at the solution uh, if the if i look at the property of a solution again i have approximated this property using this type of a curve you will see that there are different types of curves for gm that are possible okay most of the times it can be it can be a parabolic curve uh, or it can be it is not exactly parabolic i will show you that but what i am talking to uh, trying to say is this whether it is gm whether it is vm whether it is sm you have some curve once you have that curve then basically the tangent to that curve basically gives me intercepts right it gives me intercepts on the y-axis and these intercepts correspond to the partial molar properties of each component right so in this in binary case you can easily see that right you have a curve right you have a free energy curve in the case of ternary it will be a free energy surface then you will have again you can draw a tangent plane and the tangent plane again will cut three axes uh, and the three axes uh, the, the intercepts at the three axis will basically give me so because it's ternary you have three components you will give me the partial molar properties of three components right the intercepts will give you the partial molar properties of the three components right okay but remember there you have two slopes right you have delta gm so you have say for example because you have three components you have two independent components so there you will have different slopes right so you be uh, so so i'll come to that later okay so um, we do not want to go into ternary system first we want to give more examples of binary so that you become clearer and clearer now as you can see here dgm dxb is nothing but dgm dxa dxa dxb and dxa dsb is nothing but minus one so this becomes dgm dxb is nothing but minus dgm dxb is nothing but minus dgm dxa similarly d delta gm mix dxb is minus d delta gm mix dxa okay so basically if you think of that then delta gm mix is equals to d delta gm mix so basically just looking at this analog analogy you can write that if you, if you can write this then you can write it for gm0 also so basically if you write it for that then you can also write for delta gm mix which is a change in free energy due to mixing which is again given by d delta gm mix dxb times xb right xb is your x variable and plus mu a and mu is the intercept right <clears throat> now you look at this is one very important this is called application of gives to him relations okay so this is applications of gibbs 
do hem relation. Okay, so basically, let us say that delta H mix, that is the enthalpy of mixing, is given by this expression. Enthalpy of mixing or change in enthalpy uh, uh, means basically delta H mix is basically H bar, right, minus H naught, which is again basically summation H I bar N I minus H I zero and zero, right? That is basically giving you delta H. Now let us assume that delta H. Now in this case, if we are looking at the total one, but you can think of the molar one. If I think of molar one, so if I tell this is molar enthalpy of mixing, then you can directly write it in terms of x1 and x2, x1 and x2 are mole fraction. So we are thinking of this as molar molar enthalpy of mixing. like molar free energy of mixing. So, this is molar enthalpy of mixing and this is a functional. So, this functional form is A x1 x2. Now, A x1 x2 means if I tell because x2 x1 plus x2 equal to 1, then x1 is 1 minus x2. So, I can write A into 1 minus x2 into x2, right? A into 1 minus x2 into x2. This gives me A x2 minus x2 square. Now, see when I tell, so you, as you can see that you got this relation, right? D delta G dxb because minus D delta G mix dxa. So, this is for any property, right? This is for any property. Let us have a property B, then D delta B mix dxb equal to minus D delta B mix D right so so here you know this expression a x1 x2 by the way you can plot it you can plot a x1 x2 where x1 goes from 0 to 1 or x2 goes from 0 to 1 or this is like so as you can see this is the equation of a parabola a x2 minus a x2 square is a quadratic equation it's an equation of a parabola now you see d delta h mix dx2 see i haven't used partial so, I will come to that. I have not used a partial derivative here. I am writing d delta me. So, here everywhere we are writing d delta g m mix d x b, right? We are just using the, 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 the ordinary differential form, right? We are using the ordinary uh, way of differentiating, right? We are not using partial derivatives. We are using, we are not using partial derivatives. We are using normal derivatives. Now, why, why are we doing that? Why do we use uh, d d x instead of del del x, right? Because in this case, x1 plus x2 equal to 1. So, x1 and x2, x1 depends on x2 and x2 depends on, basically, x1 and x2 are not independent, right? Although, n1 and n2 can be varied independently, if I, if I can vary n1 independently or n2 independently, where n1 and n2 are the mole numbers, x1 and x2 cannot be varied independently. If I change x2, x1 automatically changes, right? Because x1 plus x2 equal to 1. Right. If I change x2, x1 has to change. dx2 is nothing but minus dx1 because dx1 plus dx2 equal to 0. But in the other case, dn1 plus dn2 equal to dn. Right. So, in this case, it is 0. Right. dx1 plus dx2 equal to 0. So, basically, we cannot use partial derivative that we cannot fix x1 and change x2 because every time I change x2, x1 changes. Right. If I change x2, x1 changes. Right. However, when I do n1 and n2, then I can take out some n2, I can add some n1, that is possible. But here, if I want to change x, x, x2, but fixing it by fixing x1, which is an impossible task, you cannot do this, and it is wrong, and it will give you a wrong result. So, you have to find out d delta h mix dx2, which comes out from this expression. So, you have this expression, and for delta h mix, so d delta h mix dx2 is a. 1 minus 2 x2, right? Now, if that is so, as you know, delta H mix is x1 delta H1 bar plus x2 delta H2 bar. So, d delta H mix dx2 is nothing but delta H2 bar minus delta H1 bar. So, x1 d delta H mix dx2 is basically, so it comes out from here. So, you have this relation, you have this relation and you have this relation. So, if you have that, now you have 
d delta h mix dx2 you multiply with x1 because you are having you want to find out this and this so i am just multiplying with x1 so i multiply with x1 so x1 delta h2 bar and this is x uh, x1 delta h2 bar minus x1 delta h1 bar so basically delta h2 bar is delta h mix plus x1 d delta h mix dx2 so this becomes a x1 x2 plus a x1 1 minus 2 x2 which becomes a x1 x1 or a x1 square. So delta h2 bar is a x1 square delta h2 bar is a x1 square right uh, a x1 square uh, and del similarly you can find out if you want to find out, you will find out that delta h1 bar, you proceed the same way, you will get a. So basically delta h2 bar is ax1 square and delta h1 bar will be also will be a x2 square. Okay, so if you have that, then delta h mix. So delta h2 bar, I told you delta so you have eliminated right so you got this so basically if as you can see here delta h2 bar minus delta h1 bar is d delta h mix delta dx2 and del d delta x mix dx2 is nothing but d delta h mix dx2 is nothing but a 1 minus 2x2 right so it, it is 1 minus so and delta h2 bar is this so delta h1 bar will be basically delta h2 bar right delta h1 bar is coming from so delta h2 bar minus delta h1 bar so delta h2 bar so delta h1 bar equals delta h2 bar minus d delta h mix according from equation 3 equation 2 you get dx2 which is basically a x one square minus a so this is a x one square minus so this is a one minus two x two. And x2 is nothing but so basically 1 minus 2x2. So this is a x1 square minus hmm, so this is minus a minus 2 a. So how why is it becoming so complex? I just just have a look at this you have this let us see this way so you have a x1 x2 a x1 x2 and you know if this is equal to x1 delta h1 bar which is say unknown and you have x2 delta h2 bar which is now known which is basically a x1 x2 square sorry a, a x1 square x2 right so basically delta h1 bar then is nothing but a x1 x2 minus a x1 square x2 now you take x1 x2 common and then you get 1 minus x1 right with a, so this is there is an x1 here so this becomes so this becomes now delta h1 bar is 1 minus x1 so which is x2 so a x2 square x1. so therefore delta h1 bar equals to a x2 square right if you plug this in you basically get back 
a x1 x2 as delta h mix so this is how we can derive so basically if i know delta h mix if i know delta h mix and if i know these relations right these are the relations that we are using first relation is this one x1 delta h1 bar plus x2 delta h2 bar is nothing but delta h mix and another is the slope right d delta h mix dx2 is delta h2 bar minus delta h1 bar right like mu b minus mu a so basically if i know this if i know this i have two equations i have two equations so this is equation number two so if i, if I have two equations then i can write the third equation then i can do one plus three and then i get delta h2 bar is a x one squared then i do again i just plug it in here i plug it in here right i so it becomes a x one square x two and here it is a x one x two and this is x1 delta h1 so i take this minus this is this right so this equal to this part minus this part right so basically which is now delta h2 bar we know is ax1 square so i put it back so if i do that x1 x2 common i get 1 minus x1 which is nothing but ax2 square x1 so delta h1 bar is ax2 square right now you can also do the other way that you know the partial molar volume of partial molar quantity of one you want to find the partial molar quantity of other right because you know gives to a relation you can do that so delta z1 bar is nothing but if you see delta z1 bar d okay you do not mistake this so d delta z1 bar equals to minus x2 by x1 d delta z2 bar right d delta z2 bar so i have taken this guy here okay so if i do that then plus becomes minus so minus x2 d delta z2 bar and then there is an x1 here so i take the x1 in the denominator right this x1 goes to the denominator first i take this on this side and then i take this as the denominator right so now if that is so i can now integrate delta z1 bar is coming from x2 equal to 0 x2 equal to 0 means pure pure x1 right it is like x so you have this relation now x2 equal to 0 basically means the component 2 is basically having no cons uh, no uh, concentration at all x2 equal to 0 means pure pure 1 right pure 1 so x2 equal to 0 to x2 if i do then we can write that so this becomes minus x2 by uh, x2 by x1 d delta z2 bar okay and if i know this relation then i can get I can get d delta z2 bar which is not and also you know d delta z2 bar is d delta z2 bar dx2 dx2 right but you have to integrate this if I have to integrate this I need to know this so if I know this if I know delta z2 bar if I know delta z2 bar then I can use this integration with these limits to find delta z1 bar that means gives you an integration which it gives one one of the partial molar properties if the other partial molar property is known so this is an example so if you know delta h2 bar which is a x1 square then d delta h2 dx2 is a dx1 square by dx1 dx1 by dx2 right we just so basically it is a x1 square so dx1 square dx1 dx1 dx2 which is minus nothing but minus 2 x1 now if i do want to do delta h1 bar which is again 0 to x2 right 0 is like x2 is basically 0 which is pure component 1 and you have x2 by x1 and d delta h2 by dx2 which is nothing but minus 2 x1 right minus 2 x1 right uh, that's what we have found it here so you plug it into 2, uh, 2 x1 2 a is common there is a minus sign minus there is a minus sign here minus minus becomes plus 2 a, 2 a goes to common and you have x2 dx2 into x1 by x1 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 you can cancel and then you get x2 dx2 which is x2 square by 2 and you have 0 to x2 which is nothing but x2 square so delta h1 bar comes out to be x2 square and you are getting it if you know delta h2 bar right that's the idea okay so another very important thing i want to tell you for example when you wrote for g you wrote g equals to h minus ts right Similarly, for each species, you will see the partial molar property, which is like mu k or g k bar, you can call it, is nothing but you can show h k bar, which is again the partial molar enthalpy minus t s k bar. 
the idea that I have that's it's, it's very interesting because as you can see this is an extensive property this is an extensive property uh -huh. and this is basically the total property right G is the total property of a multi component system right which is equal to total enthalpy minus T mi, uh, minus T s and again a H is an extensive property G is an extensive property s is an extensive property but what I am telling is if I use the partial molar similar to um, similar to uh, uh, molar quantity right in the unary solution so partial molar quantity for each species will have follow the same relation which is gk so this is nothing but gk bar you can just write hk bar minus t again t has t so partial molar properties associated with the extensive variable here so tsk bar right so you will get the same gk bar is my hk bar minus tsk so I will continue further about solution in the next class and I will also give you some examples. Okay, I will give you some examples in the next class. So uh, uh, you go through this and I will also share the lecture notes in next week. So so uh, till week 6 I will share all the lecture notes and thanks for listening and if you have any question please post it in the forum.